Well, hello my lovely viewers and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making this pot holder design. It's like an oval style and you just spread it out up top there, little couple little pockets and then you just slip your hand in and that is how you can hold your pot. Okay. So we have a couple different versions. This one does not have any stipple stitching on it. This one does have some stipple stitching. It's this hat stuff that goes across it. And it's nice, it's big, it's round. You can line it with some material to keep it heat resistant. So this is the one we will be doing today. And I hope you follow along and enjoy the video. To get started, the few things that we are going to need today are the for the materials, so you need two of everything. So you need, if you're going to be using thinner battings, then you should probably use a little bit more so that you'll get the uh, thickness and the heat resistance. So what I have is I have two layers of a cotton quilt batting. I have two layers of a heat resistant uh, fleece kind of batting. And I also have something called a thermoflec. It is just a silver type of material that is supposed to reflect the heat. So you need one of those for the front, one of those for the back. And then you need some main material for the outside. So you'll need two pieces of that. And then for the lining fabric, you're going to need two pieces of that. All right, so the first thing, like always, to get started, we need to go run the placement stitch. The placement stitch is done, and what I have here is I like to use a uh, piece of paper just to show you guys because I don't I don't use a thread in my top so that I'm not wasting thread and I much prefer it this way but you can still see it so this is what the placement stitch of the first hoop looks like and you can see let's see that there are these two lines here now you can make note of those two lines and draw them out if you want and those are added in case you want to add a directional fabric to these then you could add two pieces however I'm only going to use one so after doing the placement stitch the first thing that we have to do is we are going to need to add the batting pieces so what I do is I layer them all on top inside of the placement stitch so I put them on the inside and I like to start with the cotton batting and then I add my heat resistant batting and then I add my thermoflect on top of that. So you can do it whichever way you want. Um, if you have other fabrics that you would prefer to use, go ahead and use those. It's just I find these ones work best for me to help reduce the heat coming through the mitt. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is go back and run the batting tack down. Now that the batting tack down has been run, we can go ahead and cut it out. So you need to cut out around both of them and you need to cut it out very close to the stitching, but don't cut the stitch. And there we have it. All right, the batting is down, so that's the front, and that's the back. And the next thing that we have to do, these are the outside portions. So what we have to do next is we need to add the outside portion of the mitt. And as I mentioned before, if you have a directional fabric, you can use those two little lines in the middle right there and there so if you wanted to get your material centered into it 
then you could fold it in half like I have and go ahead and center it on there and open it up. But if you have a directional fabric, you want one facing this way, one facing that way, then you would cut your piece in half and just line it up to the middle piece. All right. So the next thing that we have to do is we need to tape it down and take it back to the machine and do the stipple stitching if that is the virgin version that you have purchased. There are a couple of different ones. So this one is going to be a cross hatch stipple stitch version and we'll go back to the machine and do that. And there we go, we have the stipple stitching done on this. So it shows the big oval outline. And you need that to match up to the next hoop. So the next thing that has to be done for this one is we need to take the piece that's going to be the lining and you need to take it and turn it right side down. So there's my right side. So it's right side facing together, right? Over the whole thing. And then you tape it or pin it in place and it's going to come back and do the finished edge of the arc. So let's go run that. There we have it. The stitching has been done to keep those in place. All right, so we'll just show you here. So we have the one side and the other side. And the next thing we have to do is we have to cut it out. So I like to cut right down the center first. And you can see it is fairly close. There's not too much space. So just make sure you cut right in the middle. Now that we have those cut out up top here, so if you use straight scissors, you're just going to make need to make sure that you cut notches in it. So when you flip it, it will turn nicely. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is you just turn this to the other side. All right. And now is a time where I like to iron the top in place. All right, so you can see here, you've got the one side and the other side. And the next thing to do at this point is if you wanted to do the top stitching that is on the mitt, I'll just show you right here. So on this one, along the top edge here, you can see the difference, I think. So this one is something I stitch on a regular machine. So if you wanna add that, you can just take it to your regular machine and top stitch just along the curve right there. So that is something I am going to do. So if you don't want to do that, then the next step would be to cut this out. Now before I cut it out, I like to add just a little piece of stabilizing glue to hold it in place, but you don't have to do this. And that just helps keep that material down. All right. So I will be back in just a moment after I run my little top stitch. There we go. I went and I ran that little top stitched top edge there. You can see it better on that side. And the next thing that we have to do is we need to cut out around the mitt. So you need to 
cut around the outside edges here and just leave that in the stitching intact but make sure you cut the front and the lining together And there we have it. So you can see when I added that little bit of the hemming tape at the bottom, how it just holds these two pieces together nicely. So you could do that if you want. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just find it easier. So now that these two pieces are cut out, the next thing that we have to do is set them aside and we will start on hoop number two. All right, so here we have the things for hoop number two. And what I'm gonna be doing is a lot of the same steps as hoop number one. So I'm just gonna go through those pretty quickly. So I have a piece of paper here, which again, I'm just going to run my placement stitch on so you can see the holes. And then we need to do the same thing by adding the batting. So you add the one, the two, and the three right on top of each other. When that's done, you cut it out and then you'll be adding the top piece again, the first outer piece, what's gonna show on the outside. Then it's gonna do the hatch uh, stitching, stipple stitching on it. And then when we're done that, I will come back and show you what we have done. All right, you guys, so all of those steps were done. There's the front, and there is the back. And now we are back for the exciting part. We get to add the pieces from hoop number one. So the thing is that for this, what you need to do is you need to take them and you're putting right sides together. So right side face down on this, and this whole outside portion is going to match this portion down here. So you don't match the center, you match where it goes along the bottom. So you take it and you line it up to all sides. And you'll do the same thing with this one up there. So you can see there is a gap between them and that is correct. All right, and then you're going to need to tape those in place to keep them down. All right, so now we have that taped into place. Let's see if I can give you a good look up there. You can see the line, you can see where it is lined up on the sides there. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to take it back to the machine and it's going to run a tack down oval to keep this in place as well it is going to be running a line for where the opening is going to be to turn it. All right let's go do that.
All right, you guys, so what we have here is everything is almost done and we have one step left to go, which will be adding the backing. So you can have a look here and you can see where I have the tack down and everything else is being held down nice. And this is where your hands will go in. So the next thing that we have to do is take the lining material and it will be lining material right side down. So right side facing together. So there's my right side. Right, that goes down and same as before you either tape it or you pin it into place and it is going to run a very large C around the whole thing and leave the turning hole open and we will be back after that. And there we have it, the finished pot holder, the front and the back. So the next thing that we have to do is we need to take it out of the hoop. Something that I like to do first is I always just like to outline kind of where my turning hole is so that when I'm stitching it up, then I can get a good uh, seam on it. But that's just me. So that's what I've done. I've just outlined it a little bit so that when I'm stitching, I'll be able to see it. All right, so now, We have that done. So the next thing is that we have to turn it right side out. And to do that, you need to go through the turning hole. Now the turning hole, because it's on an oval, um, is not as big as some other turning holes. However, and because it's very thick, so it can be turned, you just have to be careful. All right, see, there we have it. It can be done, just be careful so that you don't rip up those holes. So now is the time, so this is the wrong side out, obviously. <laughs> this is the lining part. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to close the hole. So what I like to use is I like to use a needle and thread and I use some, here we go, I use some upholstery thread in mine. So I am going to stitch this up and then I will be back. So what you do is, this is why I put those little marks there. There we have it. See, so that I can see, and then you can tuck that in along that little line. All there. All right, and then you can give it a little press. And then you'll do the same to the other side. Tuck that in. All right, so if you want to glue it, go ahead and glue it. If you want to do what I do and stitch it closed, go ahead and do that. And I will be right back. So there is my hole that has been closed up. You can see it's all stitched up there. And I don't have the neatest stitching, but that's okay. It's inside. So the next thing that we have to do is all we have to do is put your fingers in and flip it to the right side. All right, so at that point, you can give it another press. Make it all sit super nice. All 
All right. And there we have it. Uh huh. So there is the pot holder. Nice little matching set. There we go. All right, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this little video, and I hope you are gonna give these awesome little things a try. And if you haven't, please smash that subscribe button and help me out getting some more subscribers. All right, so thank you for watching, give it a shot, and have a wonderful day.